Uh, our next rock star speaker, Jeff Hilton, is the chief marketing officer and co-founder at Brandhive. Uh, he has been recognized by Advertising Age as one of America's top 100 marketers and has 36 years of broad-based business experience. And he is going to talk about marketing your science to a consumer audience. Jeff? Thanks, Heather. Wow, this is just like the Tonight Show. You come out from behind there. Um, it's great to be here. We're going to talk today uh, briefly about uh, marketing your science to a consumer audience. Um, we have a unique opportunity at this point in the industry's evolution, I believe, and that opportunity is we have a consumer who's much more receptive today to scientific data and information than we've ever had before. I want to briefly touch base on why I think that is. Um, there's, there's a lot of convergence happening in the industry, and I don't mean just acquisitions, obviously that too, but I think we've got some channel conver or excuse me, category convergence, right? We've got foods, supplements, beverages, pharma, and I think the lines are blurring, right? We see that all the time. Supplements looking more like pharma, foods and beverages incorporating supplement ingredients. So you see those lines blurring, and I think smart suppliers are finding ways to get their ingredients into food and beverage applications because the consumer would just as soon get their nutrition through the foods and beverages they eat if possible. So, um, you know, I think, I, think it's not, I think pill fatigue is not a senior's issue. I think it's a people issue. So alternative dosage forms, I think, are the future. So you've got that uh, category convergence. Then you've got channel convergence, right? You've got retail, obviously, internet, direct to consumer. You've got the practitioner channel, and increasingly practitioners are dispensing, right? So you've got practitioners who are becoming mini retailers, so to speak, and offering uh, supplements and tests and other things in a more kind of almost retail-ish setting. So those lines are blurring as well, and the meaning there is that the consumer has tons of choices. So I think the consumer today is much more open to scientific validation because they have all the options, but they don't necessarily have all the information to make a decision among their options. So that's where we come in, right? So the question is, if I have scientific studies and data, how do I get that across in a meaningful way? And I think uh, that there's a, a couple of things that I think are really important to remember. The first one is, and you hear this with some frequency, but uh, telling a story, right? I mean, your, your science has a story behind it. Um, you know, there's a company, uh, Epicor, here on the show floor that has the whole story of the people who worked in their manufacturing facility as they were producing their product. Uh, they got sick much less, and they started to document the fact that they had minimal sick days. And that kind of led them to some studies of their own employees. And so that's a compelling story, right? So science can have a story to it. People remember stories. They don't remember bullet points. And that's, that's I think, the... You know, we know the consumer is receptive to science, so we tend to pull the dump truck up and we back it all down and we say, well, there it all is. Um, and I think that's the wrong way to go about it with the consumer, right? So, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing I think is using uh, as many visual, uh, as many touch points as you can for the senses. So I think using video, audio, graphic imagery, um, I, I heard about a study recently that talked about how visual images have a faster path to the long-term memory portion of the brain, and that's kind of logical, isn't it? I mean, people remember what they saw uh, longer than they're going to remember something they read. So making sure you have those touch points of audio, video on your website, um, in your information, um, online, etc., becomes really, really important the more you can make that message uh, that way. Um, Let's uh, check my quick notes. That's another thing here. So, metaphors. Metaphors can be really powerful, right? We live in a world of metaphors. Um, likening your science to something that people are familiar with is really important. Um, another example of that, there's a company here that, that we work with called Cerule, and this is their first trade show. And they have a product, an algae product, a blue-green algae for inflammation. So the campaign and the idea we kind of developed around their science, and they have uh, clinical research, was uh, the, uh, this ingredient came out of the blue. You know, the terminology, the phrase, and we capitalized on the blue imagery, et cetera, reflecting the blue-green algae. And it becomes a very memorable device that people have to say, oh, okay, and they connect the pieces together. So I think metaphors can be a really powerful tool as well. Um, break it up. 
Uh, we have a tendency when we're looking at our science to want to tell the whole thing at, at one time. I think there is power in breaking your science story up into snippets or sections. You don't have to tell the whole story right away. You can tell part of the story and then you can tell another piece of it. And I think that's more meaningful for the consumer to hear it in bits and pieces than it is for them to try and understand a complicated concept and all at once. So don't be afraid to tell your story in stages and think about your brand and that story in, in stages that someone can consume easily, more bite-sized pieces, if you will. Um, repetition and frequency. When, when I think when you're talking about science, uh, getting, building frequency behind your message is more important than building reach behind your message. So, in other words, you want to make sure you're getting multiple deliveries of your basic message. Building that frequency is more important than making sure you're broadcasting it to the world because people don't remember things until they've heard them, you know, three, four, five times. So, making sure that you have a key statement about your science and that you're communicating it regularly and consistently becomes really important. That's how people remember things. Um, the last thing that I think is really important about this is reaching your, your consumer at the right time and place wherever you can. Obviously with media today, one of the catches is we don't have total control, right, over who sees our messages, when they see them, etc. But there are some scenarios depending on what the editorial is of where you might be running an ad that might feature your story. Um, if you are, for example, in a doctor's office waiting room and you're delivering literature to a patient, health is on their mind. Anytime you can reach your consumer in a setting where you know they're concerned about the issues you're addressing, like their health, for example, or well-being, you have a much better chance of that consumer paying attention to your message and remembering it. So hitting them at the right time and the right place becomes really, really important. Um, so those are just a few ideas. I mean, we deal with a lot of companies who have complicated science, and I think we, as an industry, could take a lesson from pharma and others who are very good at visualizing their mode of action, uh, visualizing how the product works in the body, and we tend to just hand out white papers, and that's okay for a B2B audience, but when you're talking to the consumer, you can't hand them a white paper. They're not going to read it, and they're not going to understand it, and they won't get through it. So it's a matter of making it visual, breaking it up, and telling it in the right place and time. And if you really strategize that, I think that we'll have a much better shot at getting our science through and persuading the consumer about the products and services that we offer. It's a great industry. We have so much information to share. Uh, but the consumer is uh, is confused, you know. I mean, b b beyond the, I think what just in summary, what I think is happening at the consumer level and will happen over the next 10 years is that consumers are moving from more unilateral solutions like exercise, diet, supplements, pharma, all these options they feel they have, but nobody's really bringing it all together. And now we've got genetics with uh, 23andMe, which confuses consumers to the hilt. And then we've got the, the watches and the, uh, all the, the mechanisms, but nobody's really bringing it all together. And that's what I think personalized healthcare is about. And I think the next decade will be spent trying to figure out how to bring a lot of these elements together for the consumer, because they don't understand how to coordinate any of it. And they're open to ideas, but they don't know. So I'm hoping that players in the industry will look down the road a decade and say, we got to find a way to get our ingredient uh, involved in some sort of a personalized healthcare solution scenario, because I think that's really the future of where this is all going from the consumer standpoint. Thanks very much. You know, Jeff, you, you actually came in like a, a minute under, if you believe that. So I'm going to ask a question, actually. You mentioned putting things in like easily accessible format, making it easy for consumers to find and use. Can you talk a little bit about video and the importance of integrating that kind of easy snippet for particularly social media? Um, I, I can't overemphasize the importance of video. Um, it's just the most accessible consumer medium. And you know you got to remember with video though that consumers will only pay attention to even video for a period of time. You know, 10-minute video is the same as a white paper. Nobody's going to make it to the end of your 10-minute video, and so it's it's the one-minute videos that maybe address your science in stages. And uh, I think any website that doesn't include video as some way to engage the customer, I think you're overlooking a huge opportunity. 
Absolutely, and I think this is one of the things that you pointed out. You did a report for our R&D uh, insights, uh, and that really broke down. Like, here are some key areas where you could apply this. So I would actually recommend that if any of you didn't get that report that Jeff uh, did a great job writing, uh, you can visit our uh, R&D Insights site and download that for free. But thank you so much, Jeff, as always. <music>